Thank you. So first of all, it's a great pleasure for me to be in front of you here today. I'm coming from Bulgaria. Um, my name is Christo Yanev, as you understand. Uh, we are running an tour operator in Bulgaria, dealing with alternative forms of tourism, and we are the largest tours and activities maker in the country. But I'm not going to speak about what we do today. I'm going to show you some interesting examples, some of which maybe you know, uh, some of which I'm sure you don't know, which will help all of us uh, to build a better tourism and activities marketplace together. So are you all human here? I see only human, right? Any robots? No? They're there. OK, perfect. So then uh, my presentation will make sense, because uh, uh, as, we, as we've all seen until now, uh, the robots and the artificial intelligence could be tricky uh, when we speak about tourism. OK, first of all, um, I'm not going to give you a lecture on what artificial intelligence is, because I'm sure that you know about this already. I'm going to pinpoint some very important uh, things. And the first one is the tours, the tours and, activity, the tours and activities mar mar <coughs> marketplace as a whole. Because according to Focus, right, you see what numbers they predict by 2020. So this is a big opportunity. This is a big market, and I'm sure that, uh, OK, let's, let's try something simple. Uh, are you in the tourism and activities business? Who is? OK, some people, just a few. OK. And uh, are you happy with what you're doing? Yes, right? OK, this is actually the. Uh, something that uh, we all need to think about because this brings us to very local experiences, right? And when we speak about tours and activities, and before we get into much detail about the artificial intelligence, we need to be sure about all those things that you see on the slide. First of all is trust. And uh, my presentation is going to show you how we need to combine human and artificial intelligence, not to take any side which one is better, to have more humans or to have more artificial intelligence and robots, right? So I'm not going to get any side of this topic. I'm just going to show you something interesting from experience and from the experience of our colleagues and partners. So first of all, is trust. Trust, as you know, is built with a human touch, human to human. That's why we have all the review sites. That's why you want to ask somebody about something. That's why here, on this topic, artificial intelligence cannot help you a lot. But if we look at the local experience, and uh, if you remember what uh, Get Your Guide did uh, some time ago, they bought uh, Gipsy, uh, a marketplace for very authentic tours and activities. So they didn't want to, to, to make something mainstream, so they wanted to bring it to the locals. So all the tours to be coming from local people. Here, again, we have the human touch. And uh, with the artificial intelligence and the websites, we can actually make this uh, interaction between the customers and the local suppliers much better. Next one is the product mix. Why? Here is something that maybe some of you don't know, but all those marketplaces like Viator, Get Your Guide, Musement, and so on, they don't allow duplication of products. What does this mean is that if you offer some product, very authentic, but they already have a similar product on their system, you'll be rejected, which is not good. 
because there is no competition. Because uh, I'm sure that in the countries you are coming from, you can provide a better service and a better product than somebody else, right? So take, for example, something outside of the tourism, like AliExpress and Amazon. You have all the different suppliers. Sometimes you have 1,000 products, absolutely the same, but you have different suppliers who are giving you different service. Last but not least, online length and offline is very important. When we speak about tours and activities, we need to know that the, the, uh, the day tours are booked online very easily through different platforms. And as, as the tour goes and enlarges in days, as it becomes multi-day tour, it goes offline. So already the people want to have some human touch and some human interaction when they book. I'm telling you about these things, and I'm sure that maybe you kind of know them, but this is very important when we work in the tourism and activities marketplace. When we speak about artificial intelligence, it's actually a new, to a new topic, 75, 76 years old, which, in terms of tourism, um, I'm showing you this slide because I want to, to make sure that uh, you know that there are many other different uh, fields and businesses which utilize artificial intelligence uh, much better than in tourism. So we are a little bit backing off, and from the examples you see, um, you, you kind of uh, understand that. Last but not least, from these sequences of, um, of slides, we need to make a clear differentiation between artificial intelligence and robotics, right? Because some people, when we speak about artificial intelligence, some people think that uh, we speak about robots. Yes, robots are part of the story, but what matters and what actually we were shown at the ITB on the first day, I think, yes, on the 7th of March, it was Pepper. It was the artifi artificially intelligent robot, which could be used for different services, as you may have seen. For the tours and activities marketplace, we don't have... I think we are not far from, from the time where we will, we will be offered robots uh, as tour guides. Do you think so? Are you, are you, will you be comfortable when, uh, if, if a robot is your tour guide, for example, in a destination? Okay, it will be a lot of fun, but we need to see how feasible and attractive this will be. And just to finish these sequences of slides before going to the case studies, uh, I just want to ask you which one you prefer the ICO or a human? Have you seen ICO? Toshiba humanoid robot, which acts as a um, reception staff. Have you seen this, this lady on the right-hand side? Yes? OK, which one do you prefer now? Left or right? What's that? <laughs> Left. OK. OK. Just to get into some more details about um, what the big guys are, are doing nowadays, they're doing this uh, pretty straightforward. And um, Google, of course, is, uh, is first with their uh, Absolutely, they do artificial intelligence and in everything what you, what, whatever you do with them. So they say that they're deceptively invisible. And um, in the tours and activities marketplace, what matters the most and what is the big 
which is the big um, hinder uh, up to now is the human interaction, the language, the languages. So Google kind of solved, solved this already. And uh, we are going to see something that, uh, that, that is going to help the tourism and activities marketplace. So what, what we would have is a direct tra translation between, between the languages. And we also have this now as users of Google. Of course, Google Flights, you know about this. But I'm going to stop on the third point, which is book on Google and Google Trips, which has a lot to do with the tourist and activities marketplace. Because as you know, you can book already hotels on Google. Uh, I'm sure that soon you will have the chance to book tours as well. That's why they are, uh, they are having these platforms. And uh, if you are using uh, websites as, uh, uh, such as Tour CMS, for example, where you can upload your content, guys like uh, Google, like TripAdvisor, and all the big ones uh, could actually pull your tours there, and uh, you actually could sell them on Google, too. The second one is Airbnb. Why? Because recently, they already have the experiences. And they have a very sophisticated approach towards what the user wants and how the user is directed into the tours and, experience, uh, and <coughs> experiences section in their website. Uh, what they do is that they, uh, they have a lot of machine learning. And whatever you do on Airbnb, whatever you search, it actually goes as preferences for your experiences after. So this is actually very much targeted approach towards you as an end customer to direct you in the right direction for any tours you want to take in a destination. If you do a simple thing on Airbnb, such as, uh, um, such as the normal Airbnb and the business Airbnb, you see that, uh, that actually you get different results for experiences in the same destinations. That's the, sim that's the most simple thing you could do, and you can try yourself. Booking.com, maybe you've heard about their chatbot, because almost Every travel website nowadays has a chatbot, and we are not going to, to speak about this. But I'm going to cover the second point here, which is about the experiences also. So all those big, big guys direct their um, attention to the local experiences in every destination. And here they have uh, experiences based on user feedback for the destination, such as reviews, and past travel experiences, which is quite interesting. Last but not least, we need to see the world's largest travel website, which is TripAdvisor. And um, they have, um, actually, they have one of the um, few chatbots, which is not which is, which is getting straight to the point. If you ask the chatbot of TripAdvisor something like, how are you? I, you may get an answer, I don't understand. Do you, do you want some tours and activities in Berlin or uh, hotels or something like this? And I'm going to show you later other examples of companies who are using artificial intelligence with natural language. And you can actually have a, have a chat with, with, with their chatbots in order to understand something more, not just to be driven to the point. What's interesting here for TripAdvisor is that they're fighting fake reviews with artificial intelligence, which is quite interesting. What does it mean? If you book a hotel or a tour uh, through their platform, you may uh, end up um, writing a, new, a review, right? So they check your review, and they check the credit card with which you, you make this booking. 
And actually, they, uh, um, uh, they, they, the artificial intelligence, the software checks whether the person who booked with the credit card is the same person who reviewed the, the place or the tour or the destination. This is quite interesting because they are having some problem with that. And um, I told you about that it's strictly travel oriented. Now, more. This is what I've prepared in this slide as some more case studies to look for and from. So first of all is Expedia Local Export. They are going into the local deep, deep experiences like uh, Airbnb experiences and the peer-to-peer -peer technology. So they say that they will have the human intelligence plus the artificial intelligence based on user feedback and uh, in order to provide the best tour and experience for you as a customer. The second case study is about Visit or or Orlando. You've heard about augmented reality, right? I'm sure. So Visit Orlando based, bases their app on augmented reality and artificial intelligence plus human intelligence. So all those um, reviews and feedback from people are also implemented in their platform. So you get the most appropriate tour for yourself based on your preferences and, the, and on the machine learning they, they actually implement. Very interesting for me personally is the third one about TUI and Utrip because Utrip is a platform which every business could use they also co combine human and artificial intelligence as well as user feedback, but they also um, extract data from uh, uh, different uh, uh, websites related to text and information about the destination. So what happens is when, when you book already a, a trip on TUI.com, actually uh, the system will provoke your interest and will show you some results based on your preferences for the destination, what, what you can do, how you can do it, when you can do it, and so on. This is very interesting for such a mass activity tour operator like TUI. Musement is also here because Musement is the first company to implement the first Facebook chatbot. I had an inter interesting experience with them the last week. Uh, I wanted to try their chatbot, and I told that it's part of their website. It's not part of their Facebook page. So I, I wrote in the, in the website, and you know, the chatbot normally replies in two, three seconds, right? It starts writing, and then you get a reply. So I got a reply immediately, and I told that this is a chatbot. So I started um, speaking about general things and natural language, uh, and Actually, it was an operator because I understand that, understood that when I asked, are you a chatbot or a human? And actually, the system said that it's a human. Um, so we kind of, we kind of uh, mix the two things already, and you don't know in uh, any situation to whom you are talking to. What's good is that the conversation keeps going every time, everywhere. Skyscanner is also here because uh, it's not far, in my view, the time. Uh, as you know, it was bought by C-Trip. And um, it's not far the time when they will start offering their tours and activities through their platform. Maybe you've heard about Fair Harbor. It's a predictive pricing platform for tours and activities. And uh, it, um, it uses past demand fluctuations of your price so that actually the artificial intelligence tells you for a specific time frame what will be the price, the, the selling price for your products. This is very interesting and if you don't, don't use this, you can make use of it. It's paid. The next one is Tripoto, uh, which is the first uh, artificial intelligence concierge. It pulls out data from uh, websites such as Agoda, Booking.com, 
uh, Wikipedia, so actually it forms you a, a whole trip, something like Google Trips, something like. Uh, it's very personalized, and you get a lot of information at your fingertips. Get Your Guide is here because they recently uh, got funded, 75 million, I think. And they're going to invest this money in artificial intelligence because, to tell you the truth, Get Your Guide and Viator are not, not quite into the artificial intelligence yet. How I know this? Because we use these systems and uh, platforms. And uh, what happens is every time you want to upload a tour, actually a person, a human, um, uh, approves the tour and makes it live, which is not which is not the best solution, basically, because you lose time. Uh, I spoke with uh, some guys yesterday from those companies, and they told me that uh, they are going to fix this, and they have a solution about this already. Mobile car is something very, very much related to transportation, but in terms of tours and activities and uh, very um, customer-oriented uh, products, uh, it's an interesting one because it's in the so-called retail intelligence. So based on your preferences, you could have this uh, platform uh, get you the right car, the rightest car, uh, for uh, the cheapest amount of money in the destination you need it. It sounds very, very simple, but it's not, and you need to try it in order to understand what I mean. Last but not least, I'm going to, to touch on the um, e uh, 184, which is the first personal drone. Uh, this, in terms of tours and activities, is very interesting because it allows, it would allow people to make their own trips in the cities, or it would allow companies to provide such trips for people. Last but not least, I would like to conclude that artificial intelligence and, and, and human intelligence should be combined. We should not say that one is in front of the other. We would always need human. We would always need the human touch. We would always need the computers nowadays. And um, travel is a deeply emotional activity. You cannot. You cannot just do it with computers. Nobody can do it with computers only. You need to combine both in order to keep the conversation going, in order to capture the online customer, in order to um, contact uh, during the trip and post-trip. And um, I have last thing I, I want to mention is that is this one what I wrote, that machine learning is a very powerful extension of the human brain power. That's how I imagine the situation, half of it and half of it, as I already spoke about. So, I just want to leave some five minutes for questions and discussion, because I don't want to, this to be just a monologue from my side, but I just want to interact with you a little bit more, like human, here. So I am um, expecting your questions. Thank you, guys. Who has a question? Come on, guys. Hello, Christo. Um, I just wanted to know what uh, the connection between your topic and the visit Bulgaria is. Maybe I missed it, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. The connection is, uh, is the following, that we use uh, lots of artificial intelligence in our operations not only for Visit Bulgaria, but for our new project, which is meontour.com, uh, from locals to glocals. So um, uh, we, we are kind of these things. I also have a, 
a web design company dealing with, uh, uh, with the topic. And I just tried to cover some interesting case studies related to, to the tourism and activities marketplace in which we operate, actually. Thank you. Um, how do you think, uh, how can be integrated uh, artificial intelligence with blockchain? Is it possible? Do you have some uh, plans about the blockchain? Thank you. Yes. Um, have you heard of Winding Tree? Have you heard of Winding Tree? No? It's the... Um, the most advanced blockchain in, um, in travel as a whole, not in tours and activities marketplace, but in travel. So I think that, um, I really think that they could, be, they could complement each other, but I don't think that the travel is uh, too set up for using blockchain yet. Um, there are many, th this is a completely different topic, basically, but uh, there are many constraints for, for all of us to use blockchain in travel. And uh, one of the most dangerous ones is that uh, all those money, currencies, they're not, nobody is sure about about them, right? I mean, up to now we've seen that they're going well, ups and downs is okay, but I think we, we all need still a bit more time in order to see whether this is the way forward or not. Some people got very rich utilizing that already, but I'm, I prefer to stay on the safe side and to answer this question the, the way I, I did it. One more question. One more question, guys. I give... Um, okay, I will, um, I will make a small game with you. Human to human game. I would give a very interesting product, local product, for one of you in Bulgaria, if you ask me a very interesting question. Okay? You have one minute. I mean, I would give it for free. Okay? Please. Okay, the person who asked the last question will get it. Are you tired? Ah. I just want to uh, mention that you said that there is some possibilities of uh, uh, downs and ups in cryptocurrency, but uh, for example, Ripple and uh, Stellar, uh, they don't use uh, exactly the uh, outgoing uh, ups and downs. They use just integral system, which is uh, just in seconds, you, you can uh, change, the transfer this currency, yes. make payments. Yes, there is some complicated uh, situation about the prices, but you can use this in inter internal system and it will be more uh, flexible and more, uh, uh, there is less uh, commissions and everyone will um, benefit from it. Do you, uh, so is this a question or a note? Note. Uh, okay. So yes, um, are you working in something like this? No? You're just fond of blockchains. Uh, we just, uh, we're from Georgia, and um, uh, uh, in Georgia, there is registered uh, travel agencies more than 3,000. So uh, we, th we think, how can we uh, be different? So we're making uh, decisions on innovations, on new technologies, on artificial intelligence, and how can we go uh, through, uh, through the travel um, so, uh, we're just searching the answers uh, in new and in the future technologies. That's it.
Okay, I'm, I'm reading about uh, those two currencies, yes. I cannot give you a lot more information about that, but uh, I think that you are right uh, from what I've read until now. So maybe we, we look into the, the future. So this guy, what's your name? George. George from Georgia. It's easy. <laughs> okay. This guy, uh, this guy will get, um, I'll give you my business card after. Uh, you get a local experience in Bulgaria anytime you visit the country, okay? So you will, you will see how the human interacts. Uh, so I will, I will first let you to our chatbot and uh, some more artificial intelligence and then you experience this uh, in the destination with, with a human touch, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys.